Boys, we're loading in. Isn't that great? No, Dota, yeah. <sighs> well. Once more into the <laughs> breach. <laughs> yes, yes, let's go, Flagata, let's go. Because Dota is fun, it's an awesome game, and Hefla TV is cool. We do that for the community, and we love it. So, guys, it's 2 1 for Energy Pacemaker. We are way, 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 way beyond schedule. Um, doesn't really matter because the games are amazing. Like the first game was was really a plus. This the second game was also close. The third game, man, that was. If if it continues like this, then wow. And I don't know if I, these teams. I wouldn't be surprised if we go into a full five games setup here in this grand final. In this grand final, I know we are overlapping with our own tournament on Hitbox right now, but I mean, well, Michael Lawrence and Grandis are casting there, so guys, if you have any means of watching two streams, go for it. Helps us a lot. Anyway, my name <laughs> is Hefler Mork. You are watching Hefler TV 1. It's been a blast the last 14 hours, and the next 15, I mean, not like the 15th hour. See, uh, Blackadder, you do the talking. Make a proper intro, please. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome to game number four between Tong Fu and Energy Pacemaker in the ESCC 2015 Cup. I believe the price pool is about $40,000, if I have memory serves. And going into this game, it's currently 2-1 in favor of Energy Pacemaker. In both of the wins for Energy Pacemaker, they came back from behind and just took a game very, very late. Now, going into this game, we have... Dazzle banned out, Shadow Fiend sent back to hell, Clockwork eradicated, and Tusk sent away. First yep. pick, I'm expecting a Leshrac. That was a much better intro than mine, because I really, I have to pull it together, because I'm, I'm, I'm melting here, I'm, I'm sitting in my, my own body fluids, because it's Leshrac. fucking 40 degrees here, I'm, I'm, well, I'm melting away. Anyway, looking at this... Everything has been banned out. Undying is an option, but of course the Chinese teams, they they really tend to pick the course, the course they want. We have a Leshwag. The Gyrocopter is most likely the next one to come out, um, just because it's too good of a pick. Otherwise, Tung Fu had the chance to go for a Leshwag and a Gyro combination. We saw it multiple times already. We both even together, uh, even though you just jumped onto this tournament today with me. Um, Queen of Pain is also an option. Undying for the laning. We have a Spirit Breaker and an Earth Shaker. These are like my guests right now, what they're going to save with the first uh, four ones. Mm. Well, it's going to be a Storm Spirit, and I get the sneaking suspicion, Rubik. Uh, at least would make the most sense. We've seen it a lot this game, and there we go once more. To steal the Splitter, to really, in this case, if we see it again, steal the tracks. We've seen <laughs> so many tracks stolen and cast in the last game. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was actually a quite amazing play. The funny part is, and our statsman, by the way, big shout out to Mr. Um, Mr. Corrupt Drop Bear. He has been amazing. He is from the organization Sank Deviant Stats. Um, they they do stats for Dota Pit, for Beyond the Summit, for Join Dota, and also for Hefla TV. Those guys are great. They ever since they joined the scene, they the, the funny thing is they founded Sank Deviant Stats pretty much at the same time Hefla TV was uh, made. And ever since they have been growing, more and more people go into stats. And today we have one of them here. He's he's just amazing. I love him. I want to steal him. I want to like snuggle him and adopt him. He's just good. So I hope he, he he's going to be on more stats in the future here for Hafla TV. Anyway, let's look in what else we're going to get here on Tong Fu's side. For Tong Fu, considering they have the Leshrac, Earthshaker is very, very much an option here. Or we could be looking for, I was about to say, Lion or Lena. Looking for that Finger of Death or Laguna Blade damage. In this case, we get the Lion. And the Bounty Hunter is immediately banned by Tong Fu. I think wow. they realize how much gold that guy actually made them in the last game. Considering how late it went. Sure, there wasn't many tracks in the early game. But, oh god, there was a lot of tracks in the mid to late game. That was that was very, very interesting, to be honest. First of all, seeing the Bounty Hunter banned out. That is now more space for something else. Um, the the Teshi is now banned out. They energy pacemaker don't want to have another beating by Tong Fu with the techies that would be too embarrassing, too demoralizing. And a lion has been picked. We had one lion, I think, in uh, yeah, yeah, today, just today, just we've had one lion, yeah. it was Blink Hex Incarnate, and I believe it lost. Yeah, they the lion did not win, that's all I remember. But we had one single lion, so Lina is gonna follow. So there's the yeah, the red finger and the blue finger, pretty much is out 
and Visage. Well, we had today some Visage plays, but to be honest, I don't feel well around this hero anymore. Like, the, the scaling of the birds has been taken away, synergy between other heroes is not really there. Uh, we saw some nice solo assumption kills, but other than that, um, the birds, yes, they are a nuisance, and they did some nice chain stunning, especially with the birds. But overall, I, I still feel more passionate about the other heroes. They just have more utility, more damage overall, better scaling into the late game. So yeah, I, I, it's banned, so we don't see it. It's fine. Earthshaker now secured for energy pacemaker, however. Yeah, so I, I very much like this Earthshaker pickup. We've seen it do so, so much work today. I believe this is going purely from memory. Out of the current 10 games we've cast, I've seen it seven times. And I believe it's one, five, lost two. I'm sure our stats man can tell me if I'm right or wrong. But just purely from memory, I think it's about um, five, two, seven played. It's always been very impactful in these games. Yeah, absolutely. So there's also the, the advantage that the, the Ruby cannot steal your... Uh, Fisher anymore because you're on the same team. That's very convenient, obviously. Um, the Rubik, however, he has a whole spectrum to steal right now from the last track. Also, the Spirit Breaker, like stealing Nether Strike, stealing the charge. That's a very nice utility here, especially around the fight, because if in the correct angle and through the right targets, you can really just stun everyone, interrupt potentially nice spells if the timing is all right. And of course, there is the spell, the Golden Finger. The Golden Finger in the Rubik's hand, that might also be something where suddenly the turnaround comes. EP, they already had one successful game with uh, the Dragonite, and we have the second Dragonite pretty much here of this series. Mm. Well, in the last time they played Dragonite, it was very heavy on the pushing power. It was probably the quickest game we had ending, at, I believe, around 30 minutes. Believe me, that's a quick game here. Yeah. Um, if they can do something similar, sure, Energy Pacemaker have one hell of a shot, but they have to contend with quite a few problems so far. Leshrac is the main one. Second up, this Lion, if Blink Hex becomes a big thing, Tongfu can certainly look to force that one. Spirit Breaker, however, I don't seem to be so much of a problem if, and I stress if, he doesn't get many early kills. Yeah, well, we had, in the game where the DK appeared, we had some nice pushing actually coming out. Um, they In that game, they were able to claim Roshan, I think, twice in a row. And whoa, 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 what's happening? That hero still exists? It's the first Slark I see in this tournament. Like, it's something I, I actually, I didn't want to repeat it every cast, but um, the Chinese, they don't know that Slark. Uh, usually, Chinese people like fish, but when it comes <laughs> to the Slark... No, Hefler, stop. No, come on! That was no, 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 I, I rule an end to your insanity. It will be a Slark for Tong Fu. Uh, okay. Anyway, the Chinese, they don't like that Slark, obviously. So, we have it, and I like it. Yes, I like it as well. I think it fits quite well into the style if Tongfu play aggressively. Very aggressively. <laughs> They're gonna have to. Spirit Breaker, Slark, this is just, okay, let's kill the Earthshaker, let's kill the Rubik. Oh, they're alive again, kill them again. Send them back to the graveyard. That's what Tongfu needs to do repeatedly. However, now bans. Darkseer, banned out by Energy Pacemaker. Don't blame them, considering what they're against. Yep. And for Tongfu, they have one ban remaining. I'm expecting it to be mid DK, off, uh, safe lane farming Storm Spirit, Support Earthshaker and Rubik. Instead, Whoa. no, offlane Earthshaker, AA. I've been wanting to see this all day. Yes. Many times we've seen a Winter Wyvern, and I kept saying, get an AA, get an AA. Didn't see a single AA. Now there's a Slark. Punish the Slark with the Ice Blast. Job done. Okay, that, that's that's actually very interesting. I mean, I totally understand the, the Bloodseeker ban, just because you don't want to have it against Slark, because then the region doesn't pop in. You have to force it with the Shadow Plate, but... Um, that's very interesting. The Ancient Apparition, well, late game... Oh, okay. Now, that's even better. Ancient Apparition just got another target with the IO that makes sense, because I know IO regeneration right there. The Slark has uh, trouble with the Ancient Ice Blast being on him. Lion, low HP target. And even the Leshrac, when we go really late game with this again, which is not very unlikely with those two teams, then also like things like Octorico and stuff is not ticking. And so, I kinda, I'm kind of okay with the Ancient Apparition here, even though... Well, the Slark can really blow him up, the Spirit Breaker can blow him up, and the same with the Lash Rack, not to mention the Finger. So, there are four heroes that can really obliterate the Ancient Apparition in no time. And especially the Slark with, like, his seconds of immunity, 
uh, with his ultimate. That's very, very awkward. If there's a BKB coming on top plus IO like on his tail pretty much, then this is also a force to reckon with. We have to see how this one is going. I think the Slark needs a good laning to find his way into this game. But if he finds the good laning, then Tom Crew is definitely on a good way to make this a, a five game best of five. Correct me if I'm wrong. We have seen one other IO today and it was in the first game that we cast together. Tong Fu lost. Mm, oh, yeah, maybe. Man, I casted like 30 games of this tournament in a row in three days. I have no idea. Like, I'm, I'm trying to remember as much as possible, but, uh, whoa. Yeah, it could be. I have the feeling we, we definitely casted one IO together today. Um, I'm not sure if lost or not. Um, I'm well. pretty sure IO lost first game today. We had an IO Tiny today. It. Yeah, it was by yeah. Tong Fu. I'm pretty damn sure. Yeah. But uh, while we introduced the players, Effla, maybe you should reboot your brain. Maybe then you can get some uh, energy flowing again. Yeah, well, I... Wait, into, you wanted me to do EP, right? So let's go for EP. We have the Rubik, uh, played by Lee. Behind him is Fan on the Storm Spirit. That's the safe lane, safe lane Storm Spirit. Or, like Fan and Old Chicken, they also sometimes trade their lane. So this could also be Old Chicken uh, safe lane. We have to see uh, if this one actually gone. Either way, I mentioned it already. Old Chicken is going to play the DK. We have the... Ancient Apparition played by LT, and last but not least, the offlane Earthshaker, which is something that worked out so well for EP in the past, is played by XLL. And for the fourth time in this series, that's on the flip side of the coin for Tong Fu. Handling the Slark is Zinkyu on the Leshrac, reprising his role many a time today as UUU9. On the Lion, once again, is Kabu, LPC playing the IO, and finally. On the friendly neighborhood Barathrum is Zex Bingo. What? Don't you call him Barathrum? If, I'm pretty sure it's Barathrum. There's an M in there. Really? I'm pretty sure. It uh, could just be that I'm tired and I'm slurring my words. It's very possible. But okay. going into this game, we have a dual mid at the minute for Energy Pacemaker with the Rubik and the Stompert. Yep, it's actually a dual mid on both sides, so yeah, there will be a nice little clash between Rubik and the IO. Um, the IO starting with the bottle, that means, of course, nice HP back for the Slark. And, I mean, this dual lane happens simply for the reason that, under normal circumstances, the, the Slark has a hard time, obviously, against a Storm Spirit. Like, the Storm Spirit might actually target him all the time with the Overlord. Overload and that's of course really bad for him. Storm Spirit, well, starting now he gets the overload and we have to see how much he actually can punish that Slark for just being a melee hero. Um, the IO stacking, oh, he's stacking actually both. Uh, this one was not successful, but he's stacking the other one, so that one actually went perfectly. And let's see, this mid lane definitely very interesting. On the other hand, we have the Earthshaker, he used to have like a really, really nice lane uh, time in the offlane with the earlier Earthshaker, if he gets that through against uh, the Lion plus uh, the Leshrac, like Hex, Earth Spike plus Split Earth, that's something we have to see. Indeed it will be, and we get to a nice stat with a pretty funny Oh, look around. in the mid, there's actually go here on the Storm Spirit, like with those stats, they, they're gonna get the first blood here, and even the, yeah, the Rubik was just too late here, they tried to follow up on that IO, but in the end, both of them super low on HP, but Hell, who cares? They really got this done. But the IO, yeah, with the Tango regeneration, that's easy going for them, almost restoring half of the HP of that Slark here. And with a two minute rune, that might be even more interesting. Right now, Overload slow on the Slark, but if he wanted to, he could just pounce out. There's the Invisibility rune, AA, well, nah, he's not gonna get this. He's easy going for that IO. Yeah, and now, you gotta wonder, with the first blood going to a Slark of all heroes, it, it's quite the start for him, and when you consider... Hmm... No, it was Io the book. Uh... What do you say about the, the DK, by the way, going for a soul ring? Like, because he doesn't want to bottle in this lane. I mean, uh, safe lane bottling is, is, in my opinion, always pain. Sometimes we see it, especially by Chinese teams coming out. Oh, oh mid lane, a nice mid lane jump again. Going on Lee this time. This could be quite the kill, but I don't think it's going to be that easy. You've got Fan trying to stand strong, but this isn't exactly working. And the Earth Chick, it doesn't manage to hit the 
hit the fissure either. So I have a feeling we might be at the end of that winning streak that um, that corrupt was saying about if this continues. Yeah, but there two was kills just, going to Tongfu already. There was just like two pixel missing, and that would have been an IO kill easily. But yeah, they're not lucky. They're not lucky in the mid here. It doesn't really work uh, out as they really want to. The Dragonite at the moment going for a nice little fight against the Spirit Breaker. There's a damage reduction by Brief Fire. Um, the Soaring is now up on a Dragonite with even just one point in the, uh, in the Dragon Plot that gives him mostly enough regeneration to get the 150 HP back and then just spam the mana, spam the brief fire into the Spirit Breaker. He has one self, nothing else, and we have to see how that one is going in the mid. Is there a pounce? No, I don't think so. He's, he's gonna get some damage, but it works out. Like, the IO at the moment in the mid, it's, it's just doing work. Some d warding coming out, but is no, they're not rotating in. They're really just dewarding it, and that's that's fine. The Earth Shaker, however, he has to be careful. There's a Fissure that actually not connects on anything. He's bottling a tiny bit up. There is the Earth Spike. There's a follow up hex after the Split Earth. That's a guaranteed kill. Just one more right click missing. Actually, ah, the bottle was was nice counter regening, but it was not enough. Mm. And that's the third kill for Tongfu. This is quite the start for them, but we have seen time and time again. Energy pace make it happen up early game and then win it late. Oh, in the mid they go full time here on that storm spirit. Now the Rubik is actually rotating in, but the spirits still haunting it. I think now, oh, they might actually lose that slark here. The storm still not down, and oh my God, what are you doing? Even that is going for it. Well, the IO somehow still alive has to earn. He's following the wrong target. There is another rotation in, and actually, well, this one is is good for them because now the IO might be in reach to actually get some of the dragons helping there as well, and he's gonna get denied by it. That's so unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, I suppose that's what happens when you got your spirits rotating and it hits the dragons. Yes, very nice. And that was all planned, of course. This is all skill. This is nothing to do with orange. <laughs> just... Nothing at all. No. Clearly nothing. It's not been the fact that these guys have been playing for 14, 15 hours now. Yeah. I guess their focus is also kind of trembling at this point, but let's see, we have another rotation here, the Lion at the moment, Brown Boots, the Earthshaker, well, he sees him, so, no, this one is not gonna go anywhere because the Lashrack is just too far away, however, the Lion now with that one point oh, in the Mana Drain, oh, bottom. Spirit Breaker, going for the kill onto Old Chicken, this would be a very good one if they can bring down the 70%. DK, especially with the higher. There it is. 17%, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at some point you have to hit. I mean, this one was, I mean, usually we are like always making fun out of Spirit Breaker because, um, I don't know, he's like having the the most impossible bashes that is against every law of stochastic and, and whatever, against every stats. This one, I think he had like five hits and that's very reasonable that finally he gets a proc. So, nice one. They kill the DK who was farming until now pretty nicely. If they can keep this DK down, that's certainly going to be a very, very important thing to do. But to the credit of Tong Fu, the amount of kills they've got so far, it far outseeds any other game that we've cast today in terms of early aggression. Yeah, it's relatively fast in the early game, which which I like. I mean, uh, well, well, there's another fight here. Now he has to be... I can fight there, he's stunned, and, well, that is definitely a proc, and the question is, ha do they have enough? There is a soul ring, we fire four seconds, no, he's just going out, and there's no one on the way that could interrupt it like a fisher, he's just gonna get a nice little green buff of the IO, and back to the lane, more or less. In the meantime, there is a lurking Earthshaker, when you think about it, look at him, Invis Rune up, has two points in that fissure. He knows exactly what's going on here. It could blow up that Io so badly. If he stands on top of him, gets the aftershock in there as oh, well. Oh, knows. the spirit. The spirit's hitting something, so they know something is going on. There is no vision, no sentry ward, no dust. So, wow, that was really close. Now, there's another hit. The spirit scouting and the Io actually fully aware of this. Like, nice reactions on him. Yeah, yeah that's what you get when you shadow an Io. All it takes is the spirit to give away the entire game. Yep. And look look at the Lashrock at the moment. I think he's kind of scary. Like, he got now level 7. He's completely left alone on that lane. The, the Earthshaker with his like little roaming here and there. He barely achieved anything. But we might actually find a gank. A gank on the line that would be so easy for that Storm Spirit. There it is. Jumping on him. But there's a Hex. The Hex is coming out. The, oh, the stun, however, is not missing. He actually used, I think, his... His self, that really looked like a self, he's popping everything, even in his ultimate self, Storm Spirit. You gotta be careful because there is a Slark, the Slark is pretty fast, there should be, well, a Fissure to recover, oh, but the Fissure's not coming out, not after 
Actually, the Rubik is going down and now they are in trouble. Oh, however, Ultimate being popped, the stun, the DK being so low, he can't really tank up anything. This is so many people already down. The pounce is on 6 seconds. The damage is actually taken in on the Storm Spirit. They are diving beyond the tier 2 towers, getting 4 down and all that for just a little measly lion that you should rather not have killed in this situation. Uh, to be fair, this is a Slark. This is what I love to see when there's a Slark in the game. Just balls to the wall aggression. And it's paying off so well here for Tongfen. How do you stop a slug like this as he gets another pounce, this time under the tower? Going on the Earthshaker, this was very ballsy, but in comes the backup from Bingo. One more hit from that Spirit Maker will clean it up, and the slug walks away. If they just all oh, this, that's like on the Rubik. And oh, he goes God. down immediately to the Lion and the Leshrac. This, this is just stupidly strong, and Fan comes in trying to do anything, but it's another kill going the way of Tongfu. It's 12 kills to 3 oh, at God. 8 and a half minutes. EP what has to hell? stop. Has to stop this. Like, they cannot run one by one into all of this. Now, this, like, literally snowballing with the haste shown right there and the Ancient Apparition. There's no way, well, he gets it, but there's a tiny slow. No, he doesn't even have the, the Orb of Venom, doesn't even need it, haste shown. And even the DK, like, I don't even think the DK would be would be safe. The ultimate is ready and whatnot, so EP has to stop running one by one like Lemmings into these fights because that cost them pretty much the entire laning stage. They lost almost everything you can think of. I don't want to even, even go into the net worth, but yeah, we have pretty much like a 50-50 split on net worth. All four of Tong Fu are topping, only the Storm Spirit is relatively close, and only the fifth position of uh, Tong Fu is pretty much in a, yeah, in the green area. Let's, let's call it like this, okay? Uh, Hefla, what in Divinity's Edge have, has happened? Have we fallen through some hole that's ended up in CIS Dota or European Dota? Because yeah. this doesn't happen in Chinese Dota. No, usually not. Like, usually EP is, is way more controlled, but they thought they can get some sort of revenge. They were, like, mentally maybe still in the last game, made a lot more things possible, but uh, the fact is they were not as... Yeah, vital as they thought they are, and then really dropping like lemmings, losing four heroes and feeding another three into the mid. It's 10 kills ahead, 10 minutes, and I just showed it to the viewers. We have a 7.5k lead, even more than that, and this is not good, not for 10 minutes. I mean, that's almost like, what, 1k network advantage per minute. If that continues, this game is not gonna last 20 minutes. No, it's not, and that that's the first game that's lasted less than 30 minutes, if that happens all day and with cast I, i've lost count how many games with cast too many actually but uh ep as i said uh, also a team that can very very nicely come back from the back foot but well i'm not really sure if that one works out because the laning stage is very important for these heroes like the storm spirit needed a good laning that worked not well out the dragon knight i mean you that saw it in the last fight I don't know, he, he exploded, like he joined the fight, popped his ultimate, by the time he, he made the first strike click, he was pretty much on, on zero HP and just got finished off by a lightning. He has nothing to give as in stats except for the PTs right now and the Sol Ring, and the Sol Ring of course also not supporting in fight if you actually use it because that's 150 HP less, so that's not really working. EP was planning to be still somewhat in a, in a laning stage for that time, but that didn't really work out. And we don't have an Ice Pass. Like the fifth position here on EP, not getting any experience. Those those fights would have been way way different with the ice pass. But well, that ancient apparition trying now desperately to get that level six. If you can get that level six on the AA, we might be able to get some form of momentum going and a comeback with the ice blast. Getting a good few ice blasts could at least reverse the early game deficit. But still, you've got a slark lurking with an invis rune next to the creep wave. Oh, this is God. suspect, and there we go, he's going to go straight on to the AA, and that's a dead ancient apparition. And look at him, he's just going to get the hell out of dodge with his ultimate. Hell, it won't last long enough, however, and he might actually pay for it with his life here. There's nothing else we see could do to keep him alive this time, and now comes the storm. Fan, look at him trying to get the kill, but no, finger of death says otherwise. Down goes the storm spirit, and a stolen, was that a stolen finger? I saw a stolen finger thrown on Kabu, but Kabu will survive. The uh, Ruby will not. I'm confused. Of course you are, Hebler. Don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll get through. There was a stolen figure of death by the Rubik, passed it to the lion, the lion still stands. Oh, okay, no, yeah. I was like, wow, two fingers? Where are two fingers? I mean, usually humans have like at least ten of them, but like in Dota, 
Well, with the Rubik, you can actually have two. I was just confused. I'm, I'm getting tired. Either way, um, they kind of save the day here because they at least get like one kill on the Slark. That's like mega kill, but they pay again just because they want to go deeper into it. But they should have known that Tong Fu is rotating into this. And I mean, the Storm was already in the cast animation of pretty much like sipping out again. But yes, but the cast was faster through. But at least the chat is now happy because, or not happy, I guess, because the the free two two score is not happening. Uh, maybe four two two. <laughs> no, I, it won't happen. This game is. I need to close my window because that's really annoying. <laughs> that is really truck. annoying. Boys, boys, hang on there. The ice truck is coming. <laughs> oh lord. Uh... Ice cream. Oh, soon, anyway. As soon as it's gone, I'm opening my window again, because otherwise I'm going to boil. Oh, this is bad. Storm yeah. Spirit. Not Storm Spirit even. We get the uh, Spirit Breaker brought down by the Ice Blast. First Ice Blast kill of the game. But on the flip side of the coin, a full Bloodstone for the Leshrac, and Chain Lightning starting to fly, looking for a kill. In comes Kabu. He doesn't get the split. Uh, he doesn't get the, um, the Impale, but he manages to get the kill anyway with the power of his Leshrac and Slark in the back lines, looking to bring down the Earthshaker. Does have that ultimate going, healing him up. A little bit more Storm Spirit, goes for the kill, gets stunned out by Kabu and relocate out by the Io. That's perfectly done. In the meantime though, Yu Yu does not care. He brings down the Storm Spirit and he's looking for more. He's even just going to find Old Chicken without a care in the world. It's a triple kill for Yu Yu Yu. Nine and 11 Bloodstone charges. Hell, Slark comes back. That's GG. Game is over in 13, 14 minutes on the dot. Oh, Bring God. on game five. Yeah. Well, that escalated quickly, I guess. Yes, that escalated <laughs> <laughs> What a game. I mean, after those, like EP, I I'm not even kidding. I think EP is one of the very good late game teams. But if, if they tilt in the early game in the laning stage and it's not going well, they try so hard to somehow turn it around that they completely lose it on the way. We had these situations and uh, mostly they brought it in up to like 20 minutes or 30 minutes, something like that. This time, however, they tilted completely and yes, that escalated so quickly. I think the GG call on going for the final, the very last fifth game here of this final is probably the right decision. So guys... It was a fast game, I can't complain, we go faster, I don't know, to get something to eat after 15 hours. Anyway, it's still one more game to go, and I hope EP has a better laning stage, just for the sake of having, like, an epic 120 minutes at the very end, okay? So guys, 5 minutes break, and we are back.